CEO, Eddie Gabor. And Eddie, listen, I agree that the market was due for a pullback, but my question is, um, uh, is, is was, that, was it big enough? Uh, was it a 5% pullback big enough, considering how far the market had come? Charles, I think one of the interesting things with the sell-off in April was there was a lot more damage done to names and what the broader index actually indicated. So I think that was enough and was a good entry point. Uh, now, I am a little concerned heading into next week. You know, we've had this nice run up. The VIX has come down. Yields have come down. And this rally's been on very low volume heading into a CPI print. So if that CPI print comes in really hot next week, Short term, I could see another pullback that could test those April lows, but I think those would be good entry points, and we would continue buying that dip in anticipation of what we think will happen yeah. this summer. Yeah, in fact, uh, if, just to pick up on what you're saying, NASDAQ uh, came out the gate pretty strong. Uh, you had a combination of things from uh, inflation expectations to a couple of Fed officials throwing some cold water on, on, you know, on interest rates. So again, they react, I think, more sensitively than any other, uh, any other major market. I want to pick up on your summer rally theme. Now, walk us through the rationale there. So the rationale is, I think this market and the bond market is telling us that we may get some softening on the inflation data that will be perceived as good news, and then we'll get weaker economic data. We're in a time period right now where bad news is good news because everyone wants the Fed to cut rates. So I think that will keep that narrative in play heading into the summer months. But I have to tell you, I think if the Fed cuts rates, that'll be a huge policy mistake, and we'll probably start selling at that point in time. It'll be perceived as good. It'll suck everybody in. And that's when we'll be looking to get out because I think inflation will reaccelerate regardless at the end of the year. And I think you have the 10 years starting to go back towards 5%. And if they cut rates, I think next year you'll hear the Fed having to actually raise rates again uh, to get this mm. inflation down. So I hope they're prudent and they stay where we are. Yeah, I, I hope they're prudent, too, although I wish they had started more aggressively. I think if they'd been more aggressive in the beginning, this would be a moot point now. But uh, so uh, because I understand you're looking for a changing of the guard during the summer rally. But I think I understand if you think rates are going to be an issue, then you're looking at other areas that haven't necessarily outperformed to outperform. Where, where are you looking right now? So Charles, we looked at said, okay, what can do well regardless of what the Fed does and take the guessing out of it? And since we think we're going to be in a higher inflationary regime for a while, uh, we want to own things that do well in an inflationary environment. So we've been buying the dip in energy. Uh, we took down on some of our uh, tech plays and went into energy, industrials, emerging markets. Uh, we think those three will outperform the S&P over the next few months. Uh, and then the one that's been a pain in our uh, rear end has been small caps. Uh, we got in in January. Every time we get to that 204 level and we think it's going to break out, it keeps going down. Uh, so we're being patient there. Uh, but small caps will be the fourth area that if we're going to give this broadening rally that we need to be healthy, I think those areas are way you can generate alpha and outperform uh, the S&P. Hey, before I let you go, I know you also like commodities. Commodities are tough, right? Most of the folks watching don't necessarily invest in them. They understand it because they got to pay the price. But is there a way for, for people out there to have exposure to commodities? There is, Charles. We just bought an ETF. Uh, PDBC is the symbol, and it's a non-K1. Uh, K1s are a pain in the butt for individual families when they're trying to buy commodities. And this was a broad-based commodity play. It's got oil. It's got copper. It's got natural gas, uh, wheat corn, silver, gold. So it's a great way to play commodities. We will look to get this position to 10% because I think commodities are going up. And then you can play the industrial individual equities and the energy equities again are indirectly tied to that play on inflation. And I think being overweight those areas are a way you can outperform and take the guessing out of what the Fed's going to do. All right, now for the folks listening on radio, that's Papa Delta Bravo Charlie. Have a great weekend, Eddie. Talk to you again soon. Thank you, Charles.